Hi guys, um, welcome to your flipped lesson on calculating gradient. This is a major part of our mapping or dimensions of the earth unit. Um, gradient essentially means slope. Um, in math, you'll probably hear it as rise over run. Okay, the difference in the y over the difference in the x. Um, but it's kind of the same thing in earth science to a large degree. Another way of thinking about gradient is it's simply the slope. Um, of a landscape. Um, it can also be used in other ways and we'll, we'll get into that a little later. Uh, what you're looking at right now, um, on the left, this is some hiking that I did in Ireland. This is part of the, the first half of the tallest mountain in um, Ireland. That's Karen Tool. Um, this is a very steep slope, so we would say it has a very high gradient, a high amount of elevation change over a given distance. So it's not that great a dif distance uh, horizontally, but a very great distance vertically. If you look on the right, another example of a steep gradient, these are the cliffs of Moore on the west coast of Ireland, um, about an hour from the city of Galway. And you'll see on the bottom there, there's that picture of a guy almost falling off a cliff because again, this is a very steep place. And again, a place that we would say has a very high gradient. Actually, that cave that you see on that picture on the right, um, was used in the filming of a recent Harry Potter film. Um, this is going to be a low gradient. So this is uh, Primrose Hill. Um, yes, like Primrose Everdeen. Um, Primrose Hill is uh, in the north, park, uh, no uh, north part of London. This is uh, by Regent's Park. You can actually see the London Eye. Um, if you look down there in the middle, that's the top half of a very famous um, site um, in, uh, in London. So again, low slope, you know, it's not too steep, an easy hike, you might say, and um, the lack of steepness correlates to a low gradient. So how do you calculate gradient? Well, in the front of our reference table there, there's the equations in the bottom left corner, okay? And if you take a look at this area here, you're going to see gradient. Gradient is the change in field value over distance. Change in field value is usually going to be elevation divided by the distance. The formula for gradient, we just had it, so let's um, write it out. You always do. First, it's that change in field value over distance, and then we have to abbreviate it. Um, you don't have to, but it's maybe easier, uh, less to write. So that triangle that you see there means delta, and delta, you might know from math, means change. FV, of course, is field value, so on the bottom, we're just going to put a lowercase d for distance. Remember. You always WSS. What's that? It's write your equation, substitute in your values, and then solve. Don't just jump to solve. You need to set up your equation first to make sure um, you have your values all correctly put together. Okay, so now we're going to look at our first example. We're going to calculate gradient from point A to point B. Um, those are both there on the map. There's point B, which has a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. Always look out for your unit. It's there on the top right corner of this box. And A. So these are two points in a given space, and then their temperatures are different. So we want to see how fast does the temperature change from A to B or from B to A. In other words, does it change really fast? Is there a huge difference over a short di a sh I'm sorry, a huge difference of temperature over a short distance, or is it not such a big change? Okay, so this is, um, again, we're going from A to B. And this is where our scrap paper comes into play. So we have, um, make sure you have a piece of scrap paper or an index card with you. Index card works best, but you're most likely going to have scrap paper when you take this on the regions. So you're going to hold it up from A to B, and you're going to mark off points A and B on the index card. So there's uh, the distance from A to B marked off on the edge of the index card. And then we're going to bring that card or that scrap paper down to the scale at the bottom right. So you got, see that blue line right there? That blue line represents the, um, the distance from A to B. Now we need to figure out, well, what is that distance from A to B? Okay. Uh, remember, part of that equation, the gradient equation, the bottom half is D for distance. So we measure that out. We hold the left side of the card at zero. And we're going to go ahead and mark off 20 on the index card. So now we have 0 to 20 marked off. 
that's the only distance that we're given in the case. So let's continue to move along. We're going to slide that index card down to the left. So now you have 0 to 20 marked off here. So there's 0 to 20. And then you now have also 0 to 40. Why 40? Because we just marked off a new 20, and 20 plus 20 is 40. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so we moved it down. So now this 40, if I were to pick up the index card, this 40 is actually just over the zero on the original key, which is what you should be doing. And then if you measure this last piece out, this last chunk, we're going to get about 18. And then 18 plus the 40 that we already had gives us the 58. That's where that number comes from. Let's put our information um, now into a given equation. So we wrote the formula, and we set it up. So here's our substitute. So we had W, write the formula, S, substitute in the units, uh, so the values with the units. So on the top, we have 2 degrees. Now, why 2 degrees? Where did that number come from? Well, we had, if we go back, we had 17 for B and 15 for A. So if we're setting that up, that's going to be 17 minus 15 on the top of your equation divided by the distance, which we just measured was 58. On the top, we had degrees Celsius. On the bottom, we had meters. That's our equation. 17 minus 15. Let's go over to the next page. Um, 17 minus 15 is going to give us that 2 degrees Celsius as a difference in field value. 58 was our distance, so we have... Um, 2 divided by 58, put that in your calculator, you're going to get 0.0324 um, degrees Celsius per meter. Why degrees Celsius per meter? Well, simple. This is our rule. Whenever you are calculating gradient and you want to know what the um, units are, top per the bottom. Degrees Celsius per meter. Degrees Celsius on the top, that's the top meters on the bottom, top or the bottom. Let's continue moving along. Okay, use the space below to calculate the gradient in the classroom. So there you, there you have it on your right is the gradient in the classroom. Gradient equals change in field value over distance. Notice how I wrote it out again. It's a different problem. It's a new problem. You have to write it out again. So we always WSS. Write your equation, substitute, and solve. So substitute's our next step. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So we have 28 and 20. Why 28 and 20? We're measuring from A to B. We've got 20 and 28. Right? And again, we're, um, it's actually not written here, but we are assuming that we're calculating in a unit of degrees Celsius. Okay. So we know that's going to give us 8. Um, 28 minus 20, no big deal. By the way, um, don't ever worry about the order of those uh, two values because it's just the difference. That's like saying, how do you differ in age from your brother? Well, my, personally, my brother's four years older than me. So what's the, our difference in age? It's four. It's not negative four. We're not ne you know, it doesn't matter which way it goes. Um, our the difference in our age is always four years. Okay, so over distance. So if we take a look at the bottom right here at the distance scale, right there, let's pay attention. Notice this line that I've drawn out here, this blue line, is the same distance as this line. Okay, I've just kind of brought it down there so we can see um, how it measures up on the scale. So there's, so there's um, our, our distance scale measured out. We've marked off four. Notice we've marked off four meters here on the scale. And then we take that same distance. So this was the beginning of the line right here or here, okay? And then this was the part where, that we marked off four meters, right? So now we need to measure this section to see how much we need to add to four to get our total distance. And if you look, I think that looks like about 3.3. So that's from here 
to here. That looks around 3.3. You might say it looks more like 3.2. If you're if you get a 3.1 or a 3.4, it's really fine as long as you're kind of within a reasonable range, um, somewhat close to what we have here. So we have now eight degrees Celsius on the top, 7.3 meters on the bottom, and we do some division. The answer is going to be whatever 8 divided by 7.3 is, in this case, 1.095 degrees Celsius um, per meter. And if we're going to round that to the nearest tenth, right, you've got your tenths place, your hundredths place, your thousandths place. This is the tenths place. Um, it'll, it'll be 1.1 degrees um, Celsius per meter. Now, why, again, is degrees Celsius per meter? Because top or the bottom. We have degrees Celsius on the top, meters on the bottom, top per, so that's what that slash is, uh, means um, per meter, top per the bottom. One last example. I'm going to encourage you here that if you already feel very comfortable and confident to try this one on your own, pause the video and try it um, on your own before I walk through it. Again, I, I give you guys this uh, information. I walk you through all of them so you can check your work, so you can um, be confident in your answers and really know how this is done. So when you come into class, you already know how to do it, or at least you have a pretty good idea, although you might have some questions, and that's fine. Um, so let's just do this one, uh, one last example. The student uses barometer to measure the air pressure to be a thousand millibars at sea level. That's a measurement of air pressure, and then hiked one mile up the hill. Okay, so that's actually a very easy distance we're dealing with. Um, the air pressure at the top of the hill was 1,020 millibars. I have to say that's actually a little weird. Usually air pressure is less as you go up um, in altitude. In this case, it wasn't. That's okay. There could be some local variations. We'll get there when we get to weather. What is the gradient of air pressure in the area? So notice this is not elevation anymore. It is not um, uh, temperature anymore. We're using new units, which is okay. Use the space to calculate the grade in the classroom. All right, here we go. So we have change in field value over distance. By the way, that use the space should not be there, but that's okay. Um, we get we have written our formula as we always do, WSS, and we substitute in our values. So what are our values? Well, we've got 1,020 millibars and 1,000 millibars. That was the change in field value from one location. What was the value? It was 1,000. And then the new location, what was the value? It was 1,020. And we're going to subtract those, and that gives us a nice even 20 millibars. Distance, you don't even need to do anything. You're, give, you're given a mile. So what's 20 divided by 1? 20. Anything divided by 1 is 20. So um, we have 20 millimeters, I'm sorry, millibars per mile. Now, why is that the case? Again, top per the bottom. So millibars was on the top, top, millibars per the bottom, so we get millibars per mile. Another very important thing I want to leave you with here, it's something to keep in mind um, as you work with gradient, and it's very key, it's a common mistake. It doesn't matter which number is bigger. If the number on the top, your uh, numerator, is larger or smaller than the denominator, it doesn't matter. I know you guys, and I did the same thing when I was your age. What I like to do is I like the big number to be on top, say 25, and the small number to be on bottom, so when you divide it, it's nice and easy, right? Well, sometimes what I'll see students do, and this, again, just kind of keep this in mind a little bit um, as you work through these problems, what I'll sometimes see is I'll see this, 5 over 25, and everybody knows 25 divided by 5 is 5, so they'll put 5. Not right. Take the time to do the math. Enter this in the calculator. It's not a big deal. Okay, it might be easier at the moment. When it comes Regents time, you will want every point that you can get. Thank you for joining us.